high. So I'm going to show you the specimens of wood. This is for your Viva OC and supporting purpose. I'll tell you all the important questions regarding the food that can be asked. So first thing is like in your viva or in your spotting, actually in your spotting it is marks or only tendons or ligaments and actually those that also I cover up. First thing is in why why was examination like if there is a spot like this you will have to carry the specimen in the side which it belongs. Like if this foot is of the right side right so you should have hold it in your right hand like this and just what we'll say about this that this is a specimen it's a dissected specimen of right foot got it so in your right hand you pick it up like this same in this case because we have both the foots of the right side so this is a specimen of right side it's a disse dissected specimen of right side foot okay so now in this uh, specimen mostly what the teachers are like you know, they will ask like the tendons let's say so instead of uh, just telling you the names you should learn it in an organized way so what you're finding here like you know just see it from above the two bones that have been dissected out this one is the you know the bony thing this is fibula on the lateral side to be on the medial side got it so in between the two it will be the interosseous membrane and the muscle which is centrally placed is this muscle right this is a centrally placed muscle or you can say the deepest muscle of the back of leg and that is tibialis posterior and this muscle most superficially placed in behind in the back of leg this will be gastro and soleus gastro means soleus uh, so this one is gastro and this one is soleus so gastro soleus together will form a tendon below tendon acetus so one thing you have to look from above now look here in the front of foot that's a dorsum front of leg and dorsum of foot so there you find that these tendons coming out right so remember there are four muscles in the front of leg the muscle which are the three muscles derive from the fibula you know anteromedially and there's only one muscle in the front of the leg that arises from the and to later surface of the tibia okay so this is that muscle this muscle you can see is you know it's attached here on the medial border of the foot and it goes somewhere you know down below to get an inserted on the you know plantar aspect of the medial surface medial side of the first meta tarsal as well as the medial cuneiform got it so this one is tibialis anterior so action will you know what uh, you know if they ask like all the four muscles you know there are four muscles extensor digitorum longus extensor hallucis longus actually is missing here and then you have peroneus tertius so the nerve muscle for all of them four is you know deep peroneal nerve the action tibialis anterior will be because a com common action for all these four muscles will be dorsiflexor of the foot but in an additional action for tibialis anterior is inversion of foot okay so that was about tibialis anterior now look here actually there's one more tendon which i think uh, is missing here actually it's not missing it has been detached so that's not here in the specimen but this muscle is clear you can see that this muscle is coming from the you know uh, anteromedial surface of the upper two third of fibula this muscle here you can see it is splitting here into four tendons separately right so all these are going into the respective laterally placed digits and they will insert onto the dorsal aspect of the base of the terminal phalanges of these four toes so this prime action of this muscle will be extension of the terminal IV joint of the toes that will be the prime action because it's a flex extensor digitorum longus so prime action is you know extension of terminal IV joints of the toes the next secondary action will be um, extension of the proximal IP joints of the toes the next secondary action will be extension of the 
metatarsophalangeal joints of the toes and the next second reaction will be ex, you know extension of the ankle joint so all these you know joints which it's bypassing and reaching through the you know terminal phalanges so in between all these joints it will provide the action and that will be extension so this is extensor digitorum longus and remember there are two bands of retinaculum here you have a straight band above and a y-shaped band below the y-shaped band of the extensor retinaculum has two limbs of the y the medial side and a stem on the uh, lateral side and it's through the stem of this uh, um, uh, extensor retinaculum the lower portion of this extensor retinaculum through the stem these two tendons pass out and from the you know the two limbs it will be tibialis anterior extensor halosis longus and along with the two uh, you know nerves and vessels the nerve which emerges out from the extensor retinaculum is yes deep peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve when it reaches down in the foot it splits into two terminal branches medial one becomes cutaneous and reaches down there to become cutaneous and supplies the skin here onto the you know uh, medial uh, aspect of the second after emerging out through this extensor retinaculum, this deep peroneal nerve, when it splits into two branches, the medial one becomes cutaneous, you know, then the lateral one actually, the lateral terminal branch division of this deep peroneal nerve, it passes under to the surface of this intrinsic muscle on the dorsum of foot. And this intrinsic muscle of the dorsum of foot is extensor digitorum brevis. Now, extensor digitorum brevis actually is arising from the calcaneum right so there is a non-articular surface anteriorly there is a non-articular surface of calcaneum from to that point that this muscle arising extensor digitorum brevis now importance about this extensor digitorum brevis muscle is that in you know as the word says digitorum it should actually go into these four toes but it actually you know it twists medially so it's it actually has four digitations but those four digitations, they're not reaching to the toes. They rather start counting from the first, the, the greater toe, first, second, third, fourth. So the slip from the extensor digitorum brevis muscle doesn't reach to the little toe. Rather, the first twig, you can see this one, the first twig, the first uh, tendon of extensor digitorum brevis reaches to the, you know, this um, proximal phalange of the greater toe and that's why this is called extensor hallucis brevis right so extensor hallucis brevis is actually a part of this muscle extensor digitorum brevis so what it means is now the three tendons from the middle three toes so it doesn't reach the tendon from extensor digitorum brevis doesn't reach to the little toe so the nerve supply for these this muscle is uh, you know the lateral terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve on its under surface and remember the important point about this lateral terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve is that this branch has a pseudo ganglion okay then the fourth muscle here in this extensor compartment is this this muscle you are seeing is again coming here from this you know front of leg passing through the stem of you know the upper band of the extensor retinaculum then through the lower band and through the lower band through the stem of the y then it passes below and gets inserted to the dorsal aspect of the base of the fifth metatarsal right so its action also will of course be extension of the foot all the four muscles the one which is not seen here was is extensor hallucis locus so all the four of them together help in dorsiflexion of the foot Apart from this, tibialis anterior additional action is inversion of the foot as well as tibialis and uh, sorry this peroneus tertius will also have an additional action of eversion. Eversion is late, when you face the sole laterally that is eversion or lifting the lateral border of the foot is eversion. For that you have peroneus tertius in the front of leg. So that was about the all the you know I mean whatever the artery. So the artery running into the front of leg, you know, is the anterior tibial artery. Now the anterior tibial artery, after crossing the two bands of the extensor retinaculum, it emerges under the dorsum of the foot, and it's now called 
the dorsalis pedis artery dorsalis pedis artery you can see here it has been actually cut dorsalis pedis artery you know what will be asked regarding this dorsalis pedis artery firstly where will you palpate for this actually the palpation of this dorsalis pedis artery why is it important you know in case of burgess disease or diabetic foot actually you know or in cases of shock also in cases of burn also you actually have to palpate for the peripheral vessels so it's asked like where you actually going to palpate for the dorsalis pedis artery remember so this is you know the tendon of extensor allosus longus which is missing here just later to that you will palpate for this artery and over to which bone if it asks then it's you palpate it over to the intermediate cuneiform and it's the smallest tarsal bone intermediate cuneiform where you palpate for the dorsalis pedis artery the skin here on the dorsum of foot the nerve supply will be by superficial peroneal nerve remember the entire of the dorsum of foot the nerve supply is by superficial peroneal nerve except this first interdigital cleft here it is by deep peroneal nerve okay and uh, the nail beds the nail beds remember remember it's all homologous to the nerve supply of the palm so remember the cutaneous supply of the um, palm the lateral two-third of the palm is by median nerve and medial one-third of the palm is by ulnar nerve similarly in case of digits you know the lateral three and a half digits is by median nerve and the medial one and a half digits is by ulnar nerve and remember on the dorsal side the medial three and a half digits the nail beds they were by median nerve while in the half and half of the dorsal of the hand was by radial nerve and ulnar nerve so remember the homology is because of the twisting of the uh, upper and lower limb buds remember the embryology the lower limb buds they were rotated 90 degrees medially during the course, course of embryonic development upper limb buds nearly rotate laterally by 90 degrees so the two limbs you know the pre axial border they become 180 degree opposite and the post axial border in upper limb is medial and uh, upper limb the post axial border you know it becomes medially and the pre axial border becomes you know laterally placed post axial border becomes medially placed and in the lower limb it's a pre axial border that faces medially and the post axial border faces laterally so radius being homologous to tibia is 180 degree opposite radius is lateral tibia is medial similarly ulna is homologous to fibula ulna is medial but fibula is lateral so that way remember in the uh, sole in the sole here it is lateral is by median now and medial is by ulnar nerve so in the sole actually if they ask which nerve in the sole is homologous to ulnar nerve in hand so it will be lateral plantar nerve remember ulnar nerve is homologous ulnar nerve in hand is homologous to the lateral plantar nerve of the sole similarly median nerve in palm is homologous to the median plantar nerve in the sole got it so the nail beds here right i was telling about the nerve supply of the dorsum of foot is the cutaneous supply all it is by superficial cute, uh, peroneal nerve except the nail uh, interdigital cleft that's by with which you clamp hold of the slippers this area here this is by deep peroneal nerve and the medial three and a half digits the nail beds is by median uh, plantar nerves right okay the little one and a half by skin i'm talking about and that is by little plantar nerve okay so that was about the anterior compartment or the dorsum of the foot we, i was telling you about the structures here in the dorsum of foot on this uh, specimen but let's see a few other structures if it's present in this foot this is also the right side yes so here we can see is this tendon which was missing there in this specimen and this one is the extensor hallucis longus right this is extensor hallucis longus this will be tibialis anterior you can see again the same point of insertion this is the first metatarsal and the uh, this is the first metatarsal then a medial cuneiform plantar aspect medially at the two 
the two, uh, two bones it gets inserted and the same point from literally you know the muscle which goes like here and from the sling the same point of the muscle that gets inserted is peroneus longus and that forms the fourth layer of the sole this tendon is counted as the muscle of the fourth layer of the sole peroneus longus so together the peroneus longus and tibialis anterior they form a sling <coughs> so this is extensoriasis this is extensor digitorum and this actually is a part of this together the four tendons one two three four right so they are extensor digitorum longus and this one is peroneus tertius so all the tendons you can see in this uh, specimen <coughs> down below you can also see this this is yes this one is this muscle is not very much clear but this is extensor digitorum brevis and the medial slip of this muscle is extensor halosis brevis okay so that was about extensor compartment it's done